Hello folks, it's Professor Fiore. In this video we're going to be looking at iteration or for loops. Loops will allow us to repeat bits of code in a nice predictable sort of way. Computers are very good at this. And the very first thing we're going to look at is the for structure. In a subsequent video we'll also look at while loops, a slightly different structure. So it looks like this. There's the keyword for, and we have a variable. So I'll just use x in. And then there's a couple ways I can do this. One way is to simply give a list of values. In other words, I can say something like uh, 2, 5, negative 17, 34, 6.5. Four, minus 1.1, and so on and so forth. And this with a colon. Just like the if, this needs to be indented. Now all I'm going to do here, just to illustrate what's happening, is I'm just going to print the value of x. Now if you haven't guessed what's going to happen here, is x is going to take on the value of each of the numbers, right, 2, 5, negative 17, and so forth, as it runs through this loop. Right? Now all we're going to do is print that value out. And then when we're done, I'm just going to have a little print statement over here that just says we're done. Right? So what we should get out of this is simply a listing over here of the values 2, 5, negative 17, 34, 6.54, and negative 1.1. Right? It's going to generate that many print statements, one for each. So basically the first time through the loop, x is 2, it does whatever it needs to do. The next time through the loop, x is 5, and so on and so on and so on. And of course, in the indent here, we only have the print statement, but we can have all manner of things. You know, we can have if statements in here, calculations, input statements, you name it. Okay, so this is just to illustrate how this works. So let's run this. And sure enough, there's our values, right? First two, five, negative 17, and so forth. And then when it finally exits this, we just say, mm, we're done. Right? So things to note, these numbers don't have to be in order, right? They can be integers, they can be floating point values, positive, negative, whatever. All right. Very often we have a need to create a sequence of numbers in a sort of a regular pattern. For that, we can use the range iterator. This will create a sequence for us. Um, if we just put a single value in here, like 5, it's going to start from 0 and work up to, but not including, 5. In other words, this will generate the values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. There you go. Right, so five of them, but starting at zero. And this is a sort of a truism in Python. Unless otherwise specified, we will start at zero. We can have a second value here. I could say five, uh, ten. So you can see we're going to start at five and work our way up to, but not including ten. Then, oh, let's just change this. 5, 13, 2. What do you think this is going to do? Well, we're going to start at 5, work up to, but not including 13, but we're going to jump by 2 rather than by 1. All right, 5, 7, 9, 11. Okay. Remember, up to, but not including. So, we run through and we're done. All right, so those are the two things. So, if you have a, if you have a, um, like I said, a, a sequence of values here that's a regular sequence, you're just going to increment by a certain amount, this form works great, all right? If, on the other hand, you have some kind of unique pattern, discrete values, then the other style works really well, okay? There are other things that um, we're going to come across where we don't necessarily know exactly how many times a loop is going to run. There's maybe some unique condition that ends it, in which case we'll use this other structure, the while structure. But for now, let's 
let's sort of uh, take a look at an example of where we might use this. Bingo! So here's a little paste in of a program that I wrote. And what this is going to do is create a little table for us, a current and power table, as it says, for a given resistor. We will ask the user for a resistor value. We're then going to cycle through a range of voltages. So look what we have here for V in range 10, 22. In other words, we're going to start at 10, work our way up to, but not including 20 volts by 2s. So this is going to go 10 volts, 12 volts, 14 volts, and so forth. Each time, we will calculate the current, we'll then calculate the power, and then we'll print out those three values in nice columns. So this is the heading for it. And then here's an individual line for those columns. And then finally, we have an out space here, just a sort of a, a line feed. Um, I've done something slightly different in the formatting. Notice I've used the uh, percent %G over here and the percent %S for the strings. And I did this so that everybody sort of lines up nice and clean because the numbers, you know, the whole total number of digits can change. So this way we sort of force that. And uh, basically the way this works is on the first one, right, percent %S, that's the first guy in this list. This one, first guy in that. All right, this one, this one over here. Same thing down here, right? The 10.6 is going to be the V, the 20.6 is going to be the I, and the 16.6 is going to be the P. We're going to take a closer look at this thing right here. This is properly referred to as a sequence, this percent, and then all this stuff put together. Um, we're going to take a closer look at that in a future video. But for now, this is just a nice sort of way of uh, formatting it. You could do it uh, individually, in other words, just having the VIP written here. Um, like I said, you might have some formatting issues on certain values. This is just a prettier way of doing it. Anyway, let's just run this. Okay, so a resistor value, I'm just going to throw in 220 ohms. And there we go. All right, so here's this line, voltage, current, power. That's this line. And then here's the loop. And you can see what's happening. We start off at 10 volts. We compute the current and the power, right, print them out. That's this line. Then we come back, get the next value of V, which would be 10 plus 2 or 12 volts. Do the same thing, current power. When we're done, come back at the next value. 12 plus 2 is 14 volts, then 16, then 18. Next time around, of course, we would get 220. And remember, the limit is no higher than this. All right? 10 up to, but not including 20. So here's our nice table. We could make this a little bit uh, a little bit more flexible. For example, we could ask the user up front the voltage they want to start at, the voltage they would want to end at, the jump between voltages. Right? And this would be very, very uh, flexible. The only thing I have to caution you about is that the range operator works on integers. It does not work on floats. So you can't say, you know, let's start at uh, 10 volts, go to 20, and we'll do it by two and a half volt jumps. Okay. Boom. All right, here's our error. Float object cannot be interpreted as an integer. So you can't do that. That's the only real limitation on the range uh, uh, iterator. Okay. But there we have it. Loops, very useful. I think if you just think about this for a sec, you can see just how far you can take this. All right, so a good experiment for you to do is to, um, as I said, throw some input statements in here and see if you can make these things variables and just play around with it. And here's a particularly interesting thing. Try to get to work down rather than up. In other words, instead of going 10, 12, 14, try to get it to go 20, 18, 16, 14. All right? Okay, see you next time.